my earliest memory was when I was three years old and my father was beating my mother. I remember vividly laying on some shag carpet and trying to look under the door and lock the door to a locked place where they were fighting. And, um, it was, I really felt very helpless because there was nothing I could do. So I just sat and cried. And I remember thinking at that time um, that I didn't like the emotional way I felt. And it became a goal of mine early on in life to um, care for very little. And my grandparents were the only really consistent light in our home. And, um, they took us to church occasionally and we heard the stories about Jesus and the Bible um, but I never really at that time felt like um, these stories were talking to me at all. Um, I would visit my dad's house frequently and it was not a very fun place for children. My dad's drinking was very progressive and um, hostile and I remember going out and climbing my favorite tree on climb and and I remember praying to God that I heard about a church to um, rescue me from that environment, but it never happened. And so I would go back in realizing that um, this God thing just wasn't about me. By the time I was 12, I was um, a very defiant, rebellious, uh, cold little girl. And um, I had this shell just really built around me. At that point, I was exposed to, for the first time to alcohol. And that was when my downward slope of a life of bondage really started. And by the time I was 18, I was a real mess. There were lots of people concerned for me. And my concern for myself and for other people was very minimal. Throughout my teenage years, I was able to function outwardly. I was able to make decent grades. I was even a cheerleader for a couple of years. But um, my behavior and my lifestyle um, just got more and more complicated and dark. And the saddest part was the void I had inside. It was just uncomprehensible. The, the void, the darkness, the pretty much emotionless state that I had at the time. And that continued for several months. Um, there came a time that in the middle of the night I was out and I had this enlightened moment that I felt like my life was not going to last much longer. And I knew that my life would not last much longer. And I was just in a very broken state and Pretty desperate and in the middle of the night I went to a payphone and I called my mom and, and I asked her if she could come get me and, and, and help me and at that point and for the next several months um, even really years I was God just put people in my life that would talk to me about the Lord tell me about the forgiveness and love of Jesus and um, I vividly remember a lady early on uh, talking to me about prayer and she would tell me you know just talk to God like he's a friend just talk to him just like you would to my friend sitting next to you and, and um, I remember want, being willing to do it but I didn't believe it but I, I believed in her and she believed in me so I just did it and um, I did come to believe and I, I remember sitting out one night um, on a cold January night and I was just totally defeated and I prayed really from my heart this time and, and I knew that I was ready to surrender my life to the Lord. This day was the day that my life had been in joy that I never felt throughout my entire life and um, not that my life became easy immediately at all. There was many struggles I had of me that I still have today but the worst day I have now is far better than the best day that I had before I knew the love and forgiveness of Jesus. And uh, I'm just, the, my husband that the Lord gave to me after this, my four children, 
It's a life that I never would have ever dreamed could be possible for me, and that's just about the grace of God, and I'm so thankful. My name is Christy Mormont, and this is my road to redemption.